Spaß machen beim Sport. Hey, greetings race fans. You have joined me for the Wild West Zones PCA Sim Racing Race 1 in Series 1 of this particular segment. Uh, this is where we've uh, divided out into our various collective zones. And actually, it's a conglomeration of zones for many of us because individually as zones, we don't have enough participants yet in PCA uh, to host a race and fully field it on our own. So this particular group is uh, zones 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 14 which basically is all of the western north of America, including uh, regions up in Canada, uh, Alaska, and Hawaii. But the leader has just done a 125.6. So uh, I'm here uh, joining practice, uh, doing this a little early, because I had to do some graphic updates to make sure that I got rid of a stutter problem that I picked up anytime I turned on uh, OBS and was in session um, with the roof specifically, it seemed. Um, I started getting uh, static jumps, and basically the car would become undrivable, uh, which isn't good for racing, as it turns out. So I uh, had done some tweaks and adjustments, updated some drivers, updated my BIOS. I uh, think I've got the problem sorted out, but wanted to start early and do some track runs just to make sure that uh, I got everything dialed in before I actually try to race with this all turned on in broadcasting. So if I turn out to have any problems, I'll stop broadcasting, I'll stop streaming, and we'll apologize profusely but we'll need to do so in order to be able to compete. Um, and uh, I'm sure you guys understand, but in as much as it's possible, we'll keep it all plugged in, dialed on, broadcasting out, and uh, I'll record it and I'll do what I usually do, which is do a production level copy of the video that's streaming on YouTube now um, at a higher bit rate and uh, with some uh, nice little segmentation and additional commentary at the end. Um, and I'm really excited about this particular segment of PCA Sim Racing because it represents uh, kind of getting it into the grassroots and closer to the actual... leader's just done a 123.7. Getting it closer to the actual members and uh, the membership in, in Porsche Club of America. So this is exciting, and I hope uh, it's a tremendous success. If you're not racing with us yet and you are in a PCA zone on the west side of North America, you need to look this up and see if it's for you. Um, and if uh, I can help encourage that, I definitely will. And if I can help you in any way, I will do that as well. Uh, just uh, reach out to me via the comments. You can, of course, uh, so long as I'm streaming, can uh, chat with me anytime during the race, and I will see that um, in screen, and we'll try to respond to you. Um, and if you don't feel compelled to bug me, then that's okay, too. No worries. Anyway, I'm going to get out and uh, do some practice laps. This is uh, Laguna Seca. Um, is probably one of the most technical tracks in North America. It requires a lot of uh, precision um, and a lot of really... Uh, fastidious um, driving, um, or you get caught out in some really weird ways. Um, there are several turns that are just wicked deceptive in terms of car handling. Um, so entries and exits uh, are very important. Um, the, uh, the camber in the turns is unexpectedly, it changes from one side of the track to the other. So if you don't hit it just right, you wind up uh, having some traction problems coming out. Um, so it's a, it's a tricky track in a lot of different ways. And of course the corkscrew um, is amazingly difficult because uh, the downhill right-hander is completely blind. You have to position the car based on what you can see in the surroundings, not by seeing the actual road. Um, and that's in real life, man. That's, it's, it's a trip to drive this track in real life. Um, it's also a lot of fun. One of the reasons that I like the roof so much is because it's based on a 997 platform, which, uh, if any of you know me personally, I have a 997.2 GTS, and that car is so much fun to drive. And the roof, while quicker to spool up the power because of the twin turbos and uh, the higher horsepower motor in it, um, it drives very similar to my car in real life. Um, which has been kind of interesting because I know what my car feels like and seeing how this car handles and kind of trying to mentally tie that in has been kind of a fun challenge because uh, you do have to drive differently in sim. Um, it's not exactly the same. You, you don't have the same tactile feel. Um, you have to do things visually and, and uh, by sound, um, and the sound of the tires make in sim, which is really different than, than real life. The biggest challenge that I find driving is trusting the car. Because um, one of the things you always want to do is once you hit the apex, um, you want to be in your throttle um, and in your throttle hard. And part of that is you're pulling yourself out of the turn. 
and uh, you have to have a little bit of faith in that whole process because <laughs> it's it's really easy to run wide. So you do have to modulate your throttle a little bit and do what uh, um, James uh, Huth says: uh, you're pedaling the car, um, you know, perceiving where you are, what the car is doing, and whether or not you're going to make that um, and and adjusting accordingly. But uh, it requires a little bit of faith as well, um, and that's that's a tough thing to. Uh, to get into your head and kind of start stop listening to that inner voice that says you're going too fast you're not going to make it and just trust that the car and physics is going to help pull you through um and once you start doing that you start you know letting go a little bit and just feeling the flow you get faster um at least i have so far um but it's still it's a learning lesson and you, one of the things that's always true is in crisis you revert back to bad habits um you revert back to instinct and uh, that's where, you know, in a race situation, I tend to slow down because I'm trying to deal with other things and the control the speed of the car. And so I stop kind of feeling it and flow um, and uh, wind up trying to overdrive the car and uh, it, it turns into a disaster. So I'm, I'm really working on kind of the, the mental aspect of racecraft to get the foundation to, to be able to really compete. And... Uh, not get so wrapped up in, um, well, in my head, <laughs> so to speak, uh, during the race. Let's do this, eh? Oh, we're doing a group qualify. This is new. Interesting. One. Pit lane speed limit is 35 miles per hour. That's weird qualifying. All yeah, clear on about pit exit. You can push now. Disengage limiter. Okay, Chip. We've got nine hmm. minutes to do the business. Just like the real thing. There's an incident in turn four. Turn 10. Four. The leader's just done a 144.8. Looks like P3's gone off in the Andretti hairpin. Three. Four. Five. Delta P3. Five point seven zero five. Four. Three. Two. Three, two. 
Sector 2 time is good. Three. Four. Andretti yeah. hairpin, sector three is a tenth off the pace. Yellow flag, caution. Three. Four. Five. There's an incident in turn five. Sector one Four. is quick. Three. Incident in the corpse crew. Four. Three. Four. Three. Two. Sector two is two point three seconds off the pace. Three. Four. Who's been it in turn six? Four, three, four. Yellow flag, watch out. Three. Seconds off the pace. Three, four. Looks like P three's gone off in. Yeah, Dretti hairpin. Three. Four. Five. LP4 Time is okay. Three, four, three, two. Delta to leader P3, zero three at your quickest lap in this session. You're currently 0.3 off the pace. Three, two. Three, four. 
three. Four. Okay, well, looks like I qualified second. Unless Chris comes in and snipes that. Excuse me. I had a great super burrito for dinner. That was a strange qualifying. I didn't really enjoy that all that much. But my last two laps were actually not too bad. I wound, uh, managed to get out of traffic and uh, throw down a couple of good laps. Getting stuck behind those slower cars was killing me. But uh, looks okay. The uh, session B2. Oh, that's not a bad qualification. That's what I did in Prelude to. So, uh, see how it goes, eh? Qualifying was really weird. The only way they could make this any weirder is if they had us do a standing start instead of a paced start, but obviously there's a pace car here, so we'll do a rolling start as we normally do. But uh, 
That whole qualifying was weird, man. Not used to having to contend with other traffic while trying to throw in qualifying laps. It makes it really tough. Temp is 78 Fahrenheit. Stay behind the pace car in the left column. Q. Okay, Chip, be ready. Go, go, go! Three. Four. Five. Four. Three. Two.